What's up YouTube, Shamu Aquatics here, bringing you guys another video. First off, I'm gonna start off with a couple updates. I did end up taking one of the large pieces of driftwood from my right side of the tank over here and put it more towards the middle, towards the back, and also moved some plants around because when I pulled that piece of driftwood out, it did drag out some plants along with it, but now there's more open swimming space for all the fish, so that's a plus. And also, I have finally switched over to the Fluval Cult. That is my new Fluval FX6 canister filter. And still spewing out goddamn micro bubbles. But yeah, been wanting one of those filters and I do like it so far. Then also, sorry fish, Magnet of Terror 2.0 has arrived. I also finally managed to catch those two remaining tiger barbs out of here. Those were the two remaining tiger barbs that I could not catch the first time I got rid of my tiger barbs, but they're finally out of here. And then, huh, okay, that's it. Okay, but anyway, today I'm gonna talk about owning large aquariums. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, this is my eight feet long, two feet tall, two feet wide front to back, 240 gallon planted aquarium. And not very many people own tanks this big, but only crazy people like me have tanks this size and a few others. But what makes me even crazier is the fact that I have this tank in a mobile home, which gets me to the first point, the floor. What kind of support do you have under your floor? Now, if your floor is directly on top of a concrete slab, you are golden. But if you are in a mobile home or if you have a crawl space underneath your house, you got to know what kind of support you have under your floor because you won't just be able to put that tank anywhere. You probably won't even be able to have a large tank in your house at all, depending on what the support under your floor is like. But luckily for me, Right under this tank is a big metal beam with metal supports every couple feet. And those can support thousands of pounds. Because a tank this size, 240 gallons, along with all the substrate and the water and the glass box being like almost 400 pounds itself when bone dry, this tank easily weighs like 3,000 pounds, maybe even more. So you gotta think about that. Filtration. You're gonna need some strong filtration for a tank this size. I have my FX6 and then I also have my Eheim 2215, which pretty much is just, I just have it just to have it for bacterial, like beneficial bacteria colonies. But also, the FX6, people would say, oh yeah, just that filter by itself can filter this whole tank. Well, I highly doubt that that intake is going to be pulling crap all the way from that end of the tank. So yeah, on a tank this size, I would recommend having at least two canister filters. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on an FX6, then okay, get three canister filters. Most people would recommend having a sump on a tank this size, but... I have heard horror stories of sumps overflowing and flooding houses during power outages, so I wasn't going to take that chance. Now, scaping. It takes a lot of materials to scape the entirety of a tank this size, and that money could add up quick. Luckily for me, I carried over everything from my old 
135 so I didn't have to spend that much money all I had to do was just add a couple more pieces of driftwood and a few more plants and I was good but if I were to start fresh just clean slate no leftover material completely starting over I'd be spending quite a bit of money on driftwood plants substrate rocks and all that stuff but so yeah <laughs> think about that especially if you don't want your tank to look barren and empty because when I first carried over everything from my old 135 I tried to spread it out the best I could but it still looked kind of empty in here so I still had to go buy a couple more pieces of wood and a few more plants now lighting I'm not the type of person that's going to go out and spend like 300 bucks each on these full spectrum LED lights. So I am using these cheap PetSmart LEDs. I already forgot the brand and the name of them. Like I just didn't care. I just went by like what type of lighting they were, what they looked like and the price. And even these light up the tank decently well. These two longer lights I carried over from my 135 and then there was this big dark spot in the middle of the tank. So I added this 20 inch one along the center and it's pretty good. The lighting is a little uneven. Like this one in the middle is like a lot brighter than the ones on the left and the right, but whatever. But yeah, it's gonna take a lot of lighting to fully illuminate the entirety of the tank. Now I stick with my cheap LEDs because I'm not trying to grow some crazy plants or like blind my fish, if you know what I mean. Then another point would be, I'm gonna sit back down. Maintenance. So in my experience, and this is actually true, larger tanks are easier to keep clean and easier to keep stable. So I've had my share of 10 gallon tanks and 40 gallon tanks. And let me tell you, once I got into these tanks that are 125 gallons or bigger, it got way easier for me. With my 10s and my 40 gallon and my 46 gallon bow front, I struggled to keep those tanks clean. I was doing water changes on them every week and I still could barely keep them clean. I hated it. But my 125 gallon tall, which was like a five foot odd dimensions, uh, 125, and then my 135 and this 240, easy to keep clean, very easy. And now that I have this 240, I don't even have to do water changes as often as I used to. So I do what like on my 125, my 135 and all of my other tanks, I did water changes every week, sometimes even every five days on my 46 gallon bow front and my 10 gallons. But this tank every two weeks and based on my water tests, I could easily get away with doing it only once a month. But yeah, I'll admit I struggle with smaller tanks. But when I do have to do water changes on this tank, boy, do I hate my life. It is so time consuming to do water changes on this tank. So if you have a tank this size, I definitely would not recommend messing around with the five gallon buckets and hauling those buckets at, like multiple times. You will throw your back out. But what I do is I use these 40 gallon plastic tubs that I got from Walmart and I use my gravel vac or siphon to drain water from the tank into that plastic tub. And then I use electric pumps and hoses to pump that water outside. And then I I repeat that process three times. It takes three tubs worth of water to do a 50% water change on this tank. And it's time consuming. 
Then I fill up another large 40 gallon plastic Walmart tub in my bathtub with new water. I temperature match and I dose it with Seachem Prime. Then I get another electric pump and a 25 foot hose and run that to the tank. Rece repeat that process three times. So it is time consuming. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours to do this process. If I'm rushing it, more likely an hour and a half if I'm rushing it. But if I'm taking my sweet time with it, it takes me about two to two and a half hours to get it done. And honestly, I am the type of person that likes to get things done fast. So I don't like doing water changes on this tank. Thank God I only have to do it every couple weeks. Maybe I'll start doing it every three weeks if the aesthetics allow it. Oh, that's a big poop that he's taken. I don't know why it looks white on camera. It's dark brown, but yeah. Water changes on a tank this size, very time consuming, not fun, but please don't use, be hauling five gallon buckets around to do water changes on a tank this size. You're gonna hurt yourself. Random tree plant roots floating around too. Okay, now on to the next thing. Getting it in your house. <laughs> now, most doors that I see in, on homes are like 30 inches wide. And this tank being two feet long, I mean, no, two feet wide. Yeah, you'd struggle with it about a bit. Now, in my situation, I had to bust out a window to get this tank in this room because there was no way I was gonna get it down a hallway and make a sharp left turn to get it into this room. So I had to bust out a window. But yeah, you gotta make sure, if you want a big giant fish tank, you gotta make sure you will be able to get it through your front door or all the other doors in your house if you want it in a certain room because getting it down my hallway and making a left into this room, that was not gonna happen. I had to bust out a window for that. And if you want to bust out a window, that's going to cost more money. And the cost. This tank cost me 2,500 bucks. And that's on the cheaper end for a tank this size. Most of the time I see them going for 3,000 to $4,000 brand new. And I got this one for 2,500 bucks brand new. And I think it was cheap like that because it didn't come with one of those stupid overflow boxes. But yeah. And the fact that I had to bust out a window, it cost 1200 bucks to replace that window. So it turned a $2,500 tank into a $3,700 tank. Not fun. But you could always get these tanks used I could have gotten one of these tanks used, but I didn't because my family did not feel safe with the idea of me getting a large tank like this used because of the risk of it leaking and all that. So I had no choice but to go brand new. But if you want a brand new tank this size, you're gonna be spending a lot of money. So yeah, even used, they can be pretty pricey unless somebody has no idea what they got or depending on the age of the tank. But yeah, anyway, that's all for today's video. So I'm not trying to scare you guys out of getting a large tank, but these are just some things to think about. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. So like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video after I get these close-up shots.